one of very useful tests and also treatment techniques that we can use is, is the slump. But one needs to be very, very careful when we're doing it. There's no room for this sort of cavalier approach of neurodynamics because one can set off a great deal of latent pain and, and uh, discomfort and uh, patients and clients will not thank us for it. If one considers the nerve as kind of like a little pipe, and inside this pipe we have axoplasm, so nerve juice that flows up and down. If the ability for this nerve juice becomes compromised because of maybe pressure around the nerve or irritation around the nerve, usually it's actually going to be a chemical change because of differences in uh, the ion channel makeup or, or build or, or however you want to, composition is probably the better word. Then we're going to have oversensitivity along nerves. So one must be very, very careful when we are treating with neurodynamics. But a very nice technique, both for trigger points and uh, neurodynamic techniques, is the slump. We need to remember that with the nerve, and I've tried to demonstrate this with this big bit of a theratube, that there are, there's, the nerve has to be able to move. It has to be able to slide and glide, all the way from the brain down the spinal cord, all the way to the foot. If we get the model just to straighten his leg out, one can see there's sort of some sort of stretch on the on on the uh, the theratube, which we're going to use as the sort of nervous tissue. You can relax your leg. The nervous tissue is basically a continuum, and from the brain all the way down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the, the the model now just to bend his head forwards, and then he's slump forward from the chest, and now lift his leg up. And one can see there's a great deal of, for want of a better word, stretch, tension. The old, te the old tests once, you can relax now. The old tests were once called upper limb tension tests, but it's better to call them neurodynamic tests or neurodynamic um, techniques. And we can use that in treating. We can use it to sort of maybe stimulate the, the motor end plates. We can use it to just at least find out where we've got pain. But it's a useful technique to use. I've got the patient to actually hold here because it's, a, um, it's easier to try and demonstrate. There is some sort of convergence between different points. For example, when um, I get the, the patient to flex his head forwards, bend his head forwards, that there's going to be some sort of tension going down the spinal cord at this point. And if I get him to slump down here, the tension is going to be coming from here to here and from there so there, so sort of L4 to C6, um, and C6, um, C6, C6 down to T6, and then upwards from L4 for, um, to uh, T6. Equally through the piriformis and around the head of the fibula, there are certain amounts of convergence to areas of, of, of mobility. So it's worth using it. How much clinical relevance? I'm not too sure. But it's uh, a, a useful thing to sometimes just bear in mind when, we're, when we're, we're testing. So now we'll just go on to doing the actual slump itself. So if I can just remove this for the time being. And what we're going to, what we're going to do when we slump a patient, and we're basically going to get them as a sequence that we can use. And we can use this to, to treat, as I said, and also to test. So basically we will ask the patient to put his chin on his uh, chest there, flex down from his chest, pull his foot up towards him, pull your foot up, your foot up, your foot, and bend your knee, and relax, and come back up straight. So we'll do that again. Head down, slump from the chest, straighten the leg with the foot up, and bend down, and release. Now, sometimes that will be positive along its length as we're doing it, and we can use it as a kind of sliding and gliding technique. So what we would ask the patient to do is to basically bend their head forwards, flex from their chest, and then they would bring their leg and their foot up while they lift their neck and their back up. So head down, and as you can see, the patient has relaxed his foot into plantar flexion or from dorsiflexion, and uh, moved his neck and his thoracic spine. So we'll do that one more time, a couple of times, just as an example. So the 
patient will bend his neck down, bend his chest down, lift his foot up and his knee up, and then relax his foot down and his knee down as he lifts up. And again, head down, chest down, foot up, knee up, relax his foot, bend his knee, and straighten up. And if they repeat this a couple of times, we get this nice kind of flossing type of movement that we, we can use for treatment. Obviously, we do it up to the point of kind of sensitization or a little bit of discomfort, but not any more than that. When I was a younger sort of physiotherapist, I remember one of the older physiotherapists working with some of the soccer players used to really bend them over and stretch them. I don't do that now. I, uh, I would tend to just maybe give them a little bit of uh, pressure to hold them, lift your leg up, and sometimes I will come in and move, and hopefully I haven't blocked off that too much, but coming up, but there was one time I remember people used to really stretch it. There's no need for that. So that's the slump. It's a, a very useful technique, as I said, both, in, both for testing and sensitizing and for um, uh, treatments.